Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to create a laser pointer in Stingray. Um, this is something I get asked quite a bit on the forums and uh, just in general. People want to be able to make a laser pointer um, to use with VR or for anything really. The, the, the script that I'm going to show you uh, will work with pretty much anything, like if you wanted to have a laser pointer coming out of a tank or if you wanted to have it you know, looking from one object to another object, this will work but uh, very often need some way to present a laser pointer. And the perfect example of this would be for VR. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create uh, a laser pointer using a script that I wrote that you can go ahead and import into your project and get it set up. And I'm gonna show you how to do all that and get it functioning for you in your project. Uh, content for this project uh, has everything you need to be able to get this working. So you will need to download the package. Um, but once you do that, you should be pretty much good to go and uh, you can follow along with this tutorial. So if you haven't already, go ahead and download the tutorial and I'm just gonna give you a quick show of what this kind of works like, all right? So I'm gonna launch my project right here and I'm gonna show you what the end result will be. Okay, so here I am in VR and as you can see, I can still teleport uh, with the one controller and we're gonna have to do a little work to make sure that the teleport works on the one controller but does not work with the other one. And here you can see the laser pointer. So now I can point at the wall or I can, you know, say, hey, this is what I want you to pay attention to over here or over here. And, um, you know, it's a perfectly fine laser pointer. Uh, very easy to get work, okay? And um, I've got some nice little things that I've built into it that you can uh, enable and disable, like that little spot where it hits on the wall. You can make it so that it only shows the laser or only shows the spot, or you can do both, and you can swap out the materials on uh, the laser so it even hits whatever you touch. So pretty cool stuff. Um, and it's all animated, so it looks really nice. And uh, like I said, it's very easy to get working, um, and it's very uh, adaptable and controllable. So uh, this is what I'm gonna be giving you today, is the ability to make uh, a nice laser pointer uh, for your, your project, okay? And uh, we're gonna learn how to disable the teleport on the left controller or the right controller, whichever you choose, uh, so that you can kind of do what you want or whatever you want, uh, even using um, the VR template, which normally has teleport on both hands, okay? So, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and jump into the project and see what we have to do to make this work, okay? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is uh, go ahead and launch Stingray. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna launch up Stingray. Now, once it's launched, uh, what we're gonna wanna do is use the uh, Steam VR template, because I have a Steam VR. You could use any template you want. Um, of course, this is geared towards the HTC Vive, but you could, you know, theoretically use this plugin for anything. Uh, but I am gonna walk you through how to deal with the HTC Vive kind of idiosyncrasies. Uh, so I would recommend starting with this one. Um, if you don't have an HTC Vive, you can do it with the Oculus. It'll pretty much be the same thing. Um, you'll have to figure out a little bit of a difference on here, but more or less it's the same thing. So should be uh, pretty, pretty synonymous here. So uh, let's go ahead and create this project. And I'm just going to store it on my desktop for now. So I'm just going to put it on desktop and I'm just going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call that folder, um, I don't know, example, uh, the VR pointer. Okay, uh, you can name your project whatever you want and store it wherever you'd like, uh, but that's where I'm going to create mine and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to call this uh, VR HTC laser pointer example. Okay, and I'm going to hit create. Okay, so now that my project is created and um, my template is opened, uh, what I'm going to need to do first is disable the teleport functionality on one of the controllers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go into this VR Steam uh, folder, and we're going to go into Models, and we're going to go into Controller, and we're going to grab the VR Vive 1.5 uh, unit. Okay, so we're just going to open that guy up. And once opened, we can then go into our script data. Now, inside the script data, we're gonna to need to create a new property. Uh, so we're gonna, or a new key, technically. Uh, so let's actually just open this up a little bit so we can see what it's gonna be called. We're gonna go plus, 
and we're going to create a Boolean value, uh, variable inside this object. Okay, and we're going to name it uh, enable teleport. Okay, so enable underscore teleport. Okay, and we want that value to be true by default. Okay, so uh, this way it's not going to automatically disable it. We'll have to tell it we want it to be disabled. Okay, so uh, once we have that created, we can now jump into unit flow. And really all we're gonna have to do is update this specific part of the loop, okay? So if we kind of follow this along, we have the link controllers. This is some stuff that it does to figure out which controller it's looking at. And then um, it's you can see here it says spawn teleport unit. So this is all the teleport functionality. And what we wanna do is we kind of wanna circumvent this update loop right there, okay? So that's what we're gonna use this Boolean value that we just created to kind of uh, block this from happening. Uh, when our um, our update loop is fired, okay? So um, all we're gonna need to do now is add a variable. So we're gonna go unit, and this is a special type of unit because it's a data unit, and it's specific to this unit, okay? So it's if you, if you notice, it's under unit and then data, and then we're gonna go get Boolean data, okay? And we're gonna put in the key of enable teleport. So enable underscore teleport. Okay, so now enable teleport is going to be uh, true by default, okay? And now that true value is gonna be coming out of here, okay? So that's basically how this is gonna work, is this is now gonna be true unless we tell it to be false. And then all we have to do now is circumvent this le uh, level update uh, right here. So we're just gonna go flow control and we are gonna put in a branch node. Okay, and the branch node allows us to circumvent things. So we're just gonna go into this condition point with our uh, value. Uh, we do need to set our unit to be my unit so that it knows that it's working on itself. And we're gonna connect this to the in. And when this is true, we wanna update, okay? And we're gonna delete this line right there. So what this is basically gonna say is when it's true, do exactly as you normally did, right? We're, we're not circumventing it. But if it's set to false, right? Then it's gonna to try to come out of here and there's nowhere for it to go. So it's just gonna basically do nothing, okay? And that's what we want. We want it to do nothing if this value is set to false, okay? So we're all set here. We're just gonna go ahead and go file and save and we can go ahead and close our unit editor, okay? Now in our level flow, we're gonna to need to set those variables, okay? So what we're gonna do is just kind of find a new place on the page here somewhere and we're gonna go right click and we're gonna go unit and data, set unit bool data. So I'm just looking for that one, set unit bool data. And we're gonna go ahead and copy that and paste it twice so that we have two of it because we're gonna want one for one controller and the other for the other controller, okay? So now that the, uh, the set unit bool datas are here, um, what we're gonna wanna do is grab a globally available variable that is set inside the, uh, the, the unit, okay? And that basically is just its name effectively. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just go ahead and get the unit variable. So we're gonna go variable, and we're gonna go get unit variable, okay? So we're gonna set this to be wand1 underscore one, and we're gonna go variable, get unit variable, and we're gonna go wand2, okay? And you can always get these inside the Steam VR template. These are always available. Uh, the only thing you have to do is make sure that these, the scope is no longer set to local, but in, fa in fact is going to be set to global, okay? And we're going to go global. And you can look inside the unit if you want to find out how this is set up. Uh, but basically, they just kind of declare their own names, so it's kind of very useful. All right, so now what we're going to do is just go ahead and plug these into our units, and that's going to give us our unit that we need, all right? And now all we want to do is set one to true and one to false. So let's go ahead and set this one to um, false, our wand one, and our wand two to true, okay? And you can reverse these if you would like to. Uh, that's not gonna be a problem at all. Um, and then it would just be the other controller has the laser pointer and this one won't, right? So you just you can just decide how you want that to work, all right? Um, and the last thing we wanna do is uh, set the key, okay? And the key is gonna be the same thing we set earlier, which is gonna be enable underscore teleport. Okay, and enable teleport. Okay, and we've pretty much successfully circumvented the, um, the teleporting now. 
Uh, the only thing we're going to need to do is actually tell this when to fire. And to do that, what we're going to do is just go right click, we're going to go event, and we're going to go level loaded. Now, the level loaded is probably going to fire before these guys are instantiated, okay? So what we want to do is we want to give it a little bit of time before this gets set, okay? And we don't need a lot of time, but just enough to let the computer kind of, you know, pull all this information in and kind of instantiate all the variables. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go right click and we're going to go flow control and we're going to go delay. Okay. And the delay is going to allow us to have a little bit of time before it actually fires. Okay. And we can just set this to something like 0.5 and that should be plenty good enough. Um, and you know, it's not going to hurt anything. Now, one thing that we could do is we could go um, into here and into here, but that's really a bad practice. So I'm trying to teach people not to do this. Um, you always want to control the sequence of events. So instead, what we want to do is, um, I mean, in this case, it wouldn't really matter, but you know, you always want to control the sequence of events. So what's going to happen now is it's going to go level loaded. It's going to delay for 0.5 seconds. Then it's going to set the uh, unit bool data, and then it's going to set this unit bool data. If we were to do it the other way, we don't really know which one happens first. And like I said, in this case, not a big deal, but there's many cases where it will be a big deal. So you always want to make sure that you're always traveling linearly um, rather than, you know, like this, where you don't really know what's going on or which one's happening first. Um, another option to manage this problem is you can go flow control and you can go sequence. OK, and by doing a sequence, we can control the order of operations again. OK, so one and then two. So what's going to happen is it's going to go level loaded, delay, then it's going to fire the first one, and then when the first one is complete, it will fire the second one. Okay, um, either of these two methods, either this one or you know going from here to here, deleting these two lines, and then going from here to here, they're both valid. They both do exactly the same thing. Um, it's your call. I like using the sequence node, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So the sequence to the in and the sequence to the in, and we're all set to go. All right, now we're pretty much uh, finished here. Okay, so. Level loads, it's going to delay for 0.5 seconds. Once the sequence is, um, once the delay is complete, it's going to go to the sequence node. It's going to fire uh, this enable teleport and set it to be false. It's then going to go to this one, say, hey, enable teleport, I want you to be true, and we're done. Okay, so true for one, false for the other. We have teleport on one controller and no teleport on the other controller. All right, so that's all we need for that. Now um, what we need is to get our script ready to be able to do our teleporting. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that part done now. Okay, so to get the uh, script into our project, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is, well, minimize our project. Okay, so now that it's minimized, uh, we're going to want to open up this folder, uh, which holds my project, and I'm going to go into example and example, and I'm going to go to script, and I need to be right here inside the script folder inside my project. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and extract my, um, my files from the download uh, section of the tutorial. Okay, so once the uh, folder is extracted, we're going to go ahead and open that folder. And we're just going to start copying files from one location to the other. So the first thing we're going to want to do is grab the script. So we want to grab this script flow nodes, right click, copy, and paste it into the right, into the, uh, into the same folder. Okay, so into our script folder and the script folder, we want to copy that one. Then we want to go into the Lua, copy the laser pointer, copy, go into Lua and paste. Okay, so now laser pointer exists here as well. Now we're going to go back to the root, go to our root, and let's go ahead and grab our content, models, laser pointer. And in here, we're going to find all the pieces that we need for the laser pointer. So we can just back out one copy the entire laser pointer folder, and we need that to be in content models. So we're going to go content models, and we're just going to paste it right in here. Okay, so that's basically all we need for our project to be set up now. Um, the last thing we're going to need to do is close this window, close this window, jump back to Stingray, go to our um, project root. Let's go into script Lua project.lua, and then in here we need to require the actual script, okay? So it's called laser underscore pointer, 
So we need to go uh, single quote. Oop, that's not able to be seen for you. So I'm going to go uh, script is the path slash Lua slash laser underscore pointer. And that's it. Save the file. And now, okay, so now that we've got the scripts in place, uh, we can just go ahead and go right click. And under laser pointer, we will now find the laser pointer node. Now, it's a pretty complicated node, uh, but you don't need to use all the, all the pieces, uh, but I will go through them really quick. So uh, under the hit filter and hit types, you have the ability to filter uh, your, your laser pointer if you wanna do that. Um, you can supply it a totally different laser pointer. Uh, for the contact unit. So if you don't like the, the way that the laser contact looks, you can change that. Um, and the same thing for the laser unit, you can change that uh, unit as well. Uh, but by default, it's going to use uh, the content models laser pointer. And it's gonna use this model and this model. In the materials, you can go ahead and adjust different parameters. Like if you don't like the speed or the emissive intensity, you can change that around. Now under the length, you do have to give it a length. So we're going to go ahead and give it a length of 60. Uh, you can make it as long or as short as you want. Uh, basically, if it's any you know farther away than 60 meters, it won't. Um, it'll 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 shoot the lay the ray, but it won't actually touch what you're uh, pointing at. Okay, so this is like your your kind of uh, max ray trace distance. Okay, so you do have to give it a length. Um, you have an offset. Uh, which you can use to position the laser from the head of wherever you're pointing from. Uh, in our case, we're not going to need to affect this. Um, this allows you this drop down. You can just do a laser. You can do a laser and a contact, which is like the, the point of which it like the little like red dot when it hits. Um, or you can do contact only where it's only the red dot where it hits. It does not produce the laser as well. So there's a couple nice options in here. We're going to go laser and contact, um, rotation and start position. So in this case, we're going to be using the uh, VR controller to give the rotation and the start position. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could set this to any object in your scene and your position, you know, it's, it's basically going to allow you to, um, you know, rotate it and give it a start position. You can use this on anything you want. It doesn't have to be a VR controller. We're just using the VR controller. Okay, so actually let's go ahead and do that now. So we're gonna go ahead and go right click and we are going to input um, the, uh, the Steam VR information. So we're gonna go Steam VR. We are gonna go controller pose. We're gonna grab the position and connect it to the start position and the rotation and connect it to the rotation. Now on our controller index, we're gonna go ahead and choose one because up here we're having wand one, um, which is gonna have the uh, teleport disabled. Okay, so we wanna make sure that that's what we're doing. Okay, so, um, so that's that. Now all we need to do is start the laser, stop the laser and update the laser. So Steam VR input, Steam VR button. We're gonna go ahead and choose the uh, touch down. I don't know, we could use whatever button we wanted. Uh, I'm going to choose touch down. We're going to set the controller index to one as well. We're going to make pressed start the laser. We're going to make held update the laser and we're going to make released stop the laser. Okay. Now all we need to do is update the steam VR button and we're going to do that with a traditional um, level update. So level update and that's all she wrote. Okay, so let's just go ahead and clean this stuff up. Let's just put this right here. Let's put this all into a group. Let's name the group Fire Laser Pointer. And just kind of put that over there. Let's go ahead and say group enable slash disable teleport. And now we can pretty much move on. So let's go ahead and go save. Let's um, go back to our level view court. Now, one thing that's gonna happen, um, because we are kind of calling these options into effect, right? The laser pointer and all this stuff, um, it doesn't actually exist in the level. So there's no way that the program knows to load the, this data, okay? So we have to make it know to load this data 
um, prior to um, running the game. Like you could you could hit play, uh, test level and it'll play fine, but as soon as you go to play game or run project, um, it's going to not work, right? Like you're going to get a purple question mark on the laser and the contact unit, okay? Because it doesn't know to look for them and load them ahead of schedule. So to tell the program to use that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our uh, root of our project again, and we are going to go to this boot package, okay? So we're just going to go there, and we want to go under units. So what we are going to do is go quote content slash models laser pointer. So content slash models slash laser underscore pointer. Okay. And that'll tell uh, slash star slash star. Okay. And that uh, slash star says load everything underneath it. Okay. Um, and that's going to make sure that everything in this folder gets loaded, whether it's asked for by the level or not. Okay. And we can just save that and close it. Okay, now if we were to go ahead and hit play game, or run project rather, um, we're going to be able to use our laser pointer just as we would expect. And here I am in VR. I've got my hand controllers. I can go ahead and teleport with my uh, right hand, and I can fire my laser pointer with my left hand. Okay, so everything is working as expected, and we should be pretty much good to go. All right, so I uh, hope you learned a bunch during this project, and I hope you find this uh, script extremely useful, all right? So see you in the next tutorial, and thank you very much for watching.